Hey everybody, today is part two of Guess That AI and this is kind of the intermediary step but to we go into part three, which will be another video, um, talking about what are the characteristics of an ontology and a knowledge graph? How do you distinguish between the two? Are there a lot of distinguishing traits between the two? Are they all situational? These questions and more are going to be things we're going to talk about today. So instead of me just telling you what I think, and I will say I don't always agree with what some of the others out there in the industry have to say about this. So we're going to go and review the different aspects of this quandary, and then we're going to summarize what our thoughts are at the end. We're going to use that in the third video where we will go through each of the interfaces and try to guess what is behind the scenes and hopefully apply it to your own work as well. So with that, let's go get started. What the F is a knowledge graph? A knowledge graph is making a data set smarter. It is a living document. It is capturing the knowledge that is not explicit rather than it is more on the implicit side. So I think that from a foundational perspective, this one is still a good read. Now let's go over to where ontologies end and knowledge graph begins. I don't really agree with everything in this article. Um, they're talking about ontologies are generally regarded as small, whereas a knowledge graph is large. I don't agree with that. I think that both of them can be equally as big as the other. The difference being, and we're going to talk about this as we go through, an ontology is really applying logic for inferencing on the data itself. And that makes it scalable and adds more value to the work that you're doing. But I will say an ontology on its own can also have what a knowledge graph might actually consider as an instance. So you can find cat and cat in both kinds of frameworks. One might be saying the universal cat, so this would be an ontology, has a tail. Has a would be the relationship and tail is the universal concept of a tail. Now, if you wanted to say Garfield specifically is a cat, then you'd switch over into the knowledge graph side where Garfield is a specific cat, the cat that I have at my house. I don't have a cat. But if that was my specific cat, then Garfield has a tail. I'm talking about a specific cat with a specific tail. Now, if we're talking about Garfield, the cartoon character, that also can be a universal representation of that character, which means it could be in an ontology. That's a big difference between the two. And that's why I really do think this is situational. An ontology is really needed when you have a lot of complex rules and a cl complex inferencing, which by the way, we're going to talk about this in a second, is a lightweight form of machine learning. So if I taught my machine, Garfield is a cat and cats have tails, what does that mean? Well, it could mean that Garfield, who is a cat, has a tail. Now. This is not a universal because not all cats have tails. Maybe not all Garfield cats have tails. That said, an ontology as part of the rule set, you can define when there is an exception to the rule, but it gets pretty complicated. So here, I don't agree with the small and the big. It does talk about assertions. We're gonna talk about all the words that people use for this, but assertions, otherwise known as rules, um, that are hand curated. Again, I don't think these have to be hand curated. You can use machine learning for this. You can use pre-existing um, vocabularies or schema that are already um, dictating certain rules. It doesn't necessarily have to be hand curated. Although even if you use machine learning, you still need people to check it. So I guess in a way you can say that it's hand curated. Um, usually used for solving domain specific problems. Now this one is funny because this article says the ontology is domain specific and so is the knowledge graph, but a knowledge graph can go cross domain. Show me one domain or discipline or term that really is completely unique to one domain and one discipline only, and it doesn't show up anywhere else. Again, I'm sure there are some, but you would have to think pretty, 
pretty hard about that. Okay, so there are a lot more details in this article. It's a very good read. I am just pointing out that I don't agree with these statements specifically. There's a lot of other things in this article that are true to form, and I would definitely go and check this one out. But let's go see what all other people have to say about ontologies and knowledge graphs. Looking at where a lot of people go to find answers to their questions. What is the difference between an ontology and a knowledge graph? This one, don't totally agree with. So an ontology is a set of axioms, also known as assertions and rules. Same thing, in a sense. Axioms in computer science do have a specific meaning, but for this general conversation, it's basically just rule sets. So cats have tails, that's a type of rule. Authors, creator of books, that's a type of rule. Um, these are called also principles, as the article is saying, and these define knowledge in a particular domain. Again, I think when they're talking about domain, I think they just mean a body of knowledge. I don't think they're specifically meaning only in medical. Um, and ontology is uh, visualized as a graph form. I'm gonna set that one aside. They both have nodes and edges and have a triplet, triple kind of framework. So you can visualize them both in the same way. So I'm not gonna say that that's a different. Uh, and this one, I definitely don't agree with. Ontologies can capture very complex relationships between classes and individuals. That is true. You can put individuals into ontology frameworks. I do say though that these are better represented as a knowledge graph. Uh, then, so in an ontology, you can represent and you can create very specific relationships. So if you are working in a, uh, a medical ontology where you want to say that this general um, drug has an adverse effect, so a negative effect on this other drug when you take it. So basically saying if you take these two drugs, they're gonna counteract each other and you're not going to get any benefits. That's a very unique and very specific type of relationship. You can do that same thing in a knowledge graph, but it's, it's more on the semantic side, on the schema side. So I would say that yes, defining those relationships can be done and are more suited to the structural, which is ontology, rather than the knowledge graph. But the knowledge graph is going to be representing those anyways, and you can manipulate those relationships and the entities, meaning cats have tails. You can change cat and tail to say cats and I don't know, ears, something like that. You can change those things in a knowledge graph. So I think the difference here, they don't say it explicitly, but what I would agree with is an ontology sets up the relationships and sets up the rules around those relationships, whereas a knowledge graph then just utilizes that logic to represent the knowledge. All right, so this one I wanted to showcase because they're talking about a knowledge base. What's the difference between a knowledge base and a knowledge graph? <sighs> we have so many semantic issues in our semantic domain. <laughs> so a knowledge base, um, is literally talking about the database, the, the body of knowledge that you have at your disposal. And when you have an ontology, you can then apply that ontology, that logic structure onto a knowledge base if it's structured well and pull out information. Um, so if you have um, a, a knowledge base of tables, and those tables are authors and the books um, that they author, but there's no relationship to, between the two. If you make an ontology that say author is creator of book, and then you have two tables that are authors and books, it will automatically know to put that relationship between all of those, that information. So in a way that is basically what a knowledge base is talking about. I tend to stay away from calling things a knowledge base that is because in certain disciplines, the knowledge base is a very different thing. It has a very different context. So right now I work a lot in the scholarly communication um, and, and scholarly research, um, search aggregation uh, business. Knowledge bases in that discipline mean a very different thing. Similar, but very different in this context. So I would not use knowledge base. So on this channel, you will not usually hear me 
talk about things as a knowledge base. So this one is also talking about schema versus the data that you put in the schema. So that is a very common occurrence throughout all of these definitions. So this one is from Ontotext. This is very simply, what is a knowledge graph? Now, Ontotext is pretty good um, with their explanations. Um, so this is probably a really good read. And when I'm looking at this, I see, so Big Bucks Cafe is a physical location, although not always, there's the exception to the rule. Sometimes they are not all physical. But in this case, we're going to say um, the cafes are physical. And because physical places have locations, you can say this cafe has locations in other physical places. So that's a rule. So what that means is if you're going through and for some reason somebody's trying to make um, a triple, Big Bucks Cafe is located in the World Wide Web. That's not a physical location. So this might not be a valid triple if those are the rules that you taught the machine. So that's how I would read this. Now the next one I have to say is a really great read and I wanna give a big shout out and kudos to um, Bess Schrader at Enterprise Knowledge and the Enterprise Knowledge team. They are fantastic. I have worked with them um, in my past and I've worked with Bess for many, many, many years while she worked here and other places. Um, so this is a great read and this is one of the first ones that do show up when you do this kind of search. So I um, do, agree with Bess in most of what she is saying. And we're actually going to have um, Enterprise Knowledge on the channel, so stay tuned. I'm gonna leave a lot of those details for them when they join. Um, but essentially, again, they're going through class relations and attributes, right? And attributes are the things that are um, basically the metadata on those classes. So if you, and even relationships. So if you have to dictate the definition or what is a definition, that's a distinction between these two things. So in an ontology, you would define what is a definition. It is describing something and it can be associated with a class. Whereas when you're dealing with a knowledge graph, it would be cat and then you would have definition as, as like the metadata tag and then you would give the definition of what a cat is. Their description here is really great. So I will leave you to read all of that. Now this one is talking about, I really like the way that Fabio has described this. By the way, if you're not following him, he writes a lot about this topic as well as doing podcasts. Fantastic, highly recommend it. Ontologies have been around for a very long time, but more in a philosophical um, meta way rather than a thing for computer way. So you can go ahead and check that out. Um, but again, he's saying ontology here is concepts, relations, attributes. And he's talking about knowledge sets here. Knowledge sets, again, it's sort of implied in some of the other ones that we've already reviewed, but a knowledge set is not just what is the data, but how was it created? What is it going to be used for? What systems are going to be using it? I think this is a great addition to you know the rules of thumb about what an ontology is representing. It, it really is more on the schema side, the rule set side, rather than a knowledge graph, which is then populating that rule set with really good information. So he also goes in and talks about what he's calling um, this, this mesh. And this mesh is really talking about all the different aspects in your databases and how they can be then synthesized with an ontology into actionable insights. Actionable insights is really important when it comes to a knowledge graph. That is one of the biggest perks of having a knowledge graph. You extract knowledge and information that you never even knew was connected. You never would know that, true statement, uh, Yoda from the Star Wars universe was influenced by the speech patterns and, and the speeches from Albert Einstein. How would you have known that? Well, you could read thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of articles and do a lot of research and be, you know, a fantastic person dedicating their life to linguistic properties in Star Wars. I'm sure there are some that are doing that. Or you can synthesize a lot of that data into attributes and um, axioms and the rule sets. And then when you populate the data, you can then sometimes find things that you didn't even know existed. Here's the knowledge base, the database, right? So we were talking about this a little bit where it's talking about how these things 
interrelate, but it's really on um, just the database side that, you know, these are the things that you would then use an ontology to then extract good and smart things out of. And that's essentially what he's talking about here. So you can see that these are the frameworks. See, this data fabric is what he's talking about, is the whole picture, the taxonomies, the knowledge bases, the systems, the ontologies, and then building it all out so you get a knowledge graph that you can query for really cool insights into things. All right, so here's another one. If you don't know KD Nuggets, also a really, really great article um, or a really great system to, to check out. This one is talking about the data fabric for machine learning. All right, so this one is talking about the data fabric for machine learning, this is part one. This is again by the same author, Fabio, and he is explaining what the connection between an ontology and a knowledge graph is, and it's essentially inferencing. Being able to run lower level or sometimes very complex algorithms off of that information that you have um, in the ontology, those rule sets that you've generated, and then you're basically applying that to your knowledge base or your information at your disposal, and you're trying to find insights out of it. That's, that's a form of machine learning. And then the very last thing is talking about knowledge graphs um, on data diversity. So data diversity is yet again, another one that doesn't always come up in search engines, but it's definitely one to subscribe to and check out. And this one is talking about yet another use case for a knowledge graph. So we saw machine learning was extracting insights and meaning. This one is talking about context, which is another form of meaning, compliance, which is very important for enterprise knowledge graphs, where you can make sure that you are compliant with whatever standards and regulations that you have to have because you can have an easier way of going through and identifying when there are red flags and when there are different um, things that you need to really piece together. This is really talking about what is the use of a knowledge graph. So here, this is basically what we came out of from all of that analysis. And again, this is just my interpretation uh, from a lot of my experience, I will say that when you look at things um, in real life, in real situations, an ontology can look very similar to a knowledge graph. Just be aware, this is very situational. There is no right or wrong answer. And you know what? If you're not sure which one you need or you want to start with or, or what's going to be the most useful, Start with a small sample, start with a small data set and try them both out, see what works best. And with that, I wish you well. I hope that we have many opportunities to make more knowledge graphs together in upcoming videos and I'll catch you next time.